Hello everybody. Hi. My name is Darren. And I'm Graham. And we have been the film cinema to see a film called John Wick Chapter 2. Is it called John Wick Chapter 2? Yeah. That's great. That's a great name. It is a great name, it isn't it? It is a great name. Yeah, it's not like I don't even give a shit if you've no. seen the first one because, you know, this is Chapter 2. It's not like trying to trick you in. No, no, no. And it yeah. wasn't like Chapter 1. Didn't no. call itself Chapter 1, but yeah. now it's Chapter 2. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Let's continue it. Yeah, let's, exactly. let's just crack the As opposed to like John Wick the Reckoning or something yeah, where they're trying yeah, to trick yeah. people to just come and see it. That's like, nah, it's the second one. Nah, yeah. yeah. You just get more of the same. Come on. Well, you get a lot more of it. You get a lot more of all the different aspects. Yeah. Including the chatty bits. Uh, well, oh, I don't know. Let's the start off with the bad things because well, there isn't any. It's so short, that's short. It's shorter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Huh? What do you think is a bad thing about this film? It's chatty. That's not a bad thing. But exactly, there's such little amount of bad things. But you're saying the chattiness is a bad thing. I think I think for newcomers to the film, I don't care about them. That's <laughs> not their film. Not my problem. But also, if you were there to watch a a fight film, well, you should just go to see the film that you've been. Paid to see, paid to see. John Wick, too. Yeah. So, are you arguing that people, who's gone to see this film in your mind, someone that's seen the first or not seen the first? In in this particular argument, I'm saying people who've only come to see Chapter Two without seeing, well, they shouldn't be expecting anything, let alone a specifically a fight film, because they've not got anything to compare it to. That's true. And actually, the first one is a lot chattier than you might remember. It probably is, you know, because I yeah. only remember all the kick-ass fighting. Because there's an entire like 20 minutes at the beginning where he has to. Get back, you know. Yeah, and before he smashes the sledgehammer yeah, 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 yeah. with the, smash <clears> the ground, and up. that's like a big climactic moment. I know, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. It builds so it's that. like a slow burner in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but for twenty minutes, it's a slow burner. But yeah. no, 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 for twenty it's minutes, a slow burner for the Snapchat generation. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's all the bad points gone. Yes, uh, everything else. I mean, wait, it's just perfect, isn't it? It's uh, just on point. It's yeah, everything quite literally just... in some cases, yeah. specifically when he's holding a pencil. Yeah. Um, it's just God. That was brutal. Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty gory. I, I you you I had you on my right and oh, Chris on yeah. my left. No, I know you're going to complain about this. And when Go the on. pencil went in the ear, yeah, both of you went like that. It's like having sort of pussy surround sounds like <laughs> on both sides. No, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm well, not maybe. arguing with your reaction. I just think, have you not seen a film where somebody gets a sharp thing jabbed in their ear before? Yeah, but Darren, I'm not just sitting there watching a film. Am I? I'm engrossed. I'm enjoying it. I'm really kind of living it with well, him. No, you know I what I mean? Too, so when I see somebody get slightly punctured. desensitized to things like that, I mean, if I see a man's head getting like penetrated, seventy-eight I... in Dawn For of the real? Dead, it happened in like graphic That's detail in. Um, uh, go on, go on. That Takeshi Miike film, Ishii the Killer. Yeah, oh, I haven't seen that one. Have you seen Issue the Killer? No. Oh, that's fucking weird, that one. Well, yes. yeah, <laughs> I've heard it's a weird one. Yeah. I'm not avoiding it for a reason, it's just I've heard that that is a weird one. Yeah. And I'd like to see it, but um, somebody dies from a pencil. No, a knife. He shoves a knife into his own ear. Well, that's different, isn't it? It's not a pencil. No, but that's just strange that you both freaked out so much about a pencil theory, and I thought, well... Well, it was a good pencil. Pretty standard. Don't break the pencil now. <laughs> yeah, not a 2B. Um, <laughs> well, is that a type well, of pencil? Today, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was really good. It reminded me of a Bond film. Well, Darren, which one? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> a Bond film. Yeah, yeah. The entire franchise. Yeah, every Bond. Which it reminds me mostly, of every Bond. All which of aspects them. of oh of John Wick? Of John Wick reminded you of which films? It reminded me of all the Bond <laughs> films and the aspects of John Wick that okay. reminded me of all the Bond films. Okay. Are firstly the opening was basically nothing to do with the rest of the film. Mm. Like in, say, Goldfinger, for example. Yeah. If you need specifics. Well, or, or any of the film, others. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, that, it, and that was a lot. There was like a good oh, comedic yeah, moment to bring in the audience well, because the they thought, quite oh, it's going to be light hot. Well, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. Very tongue-in-cheek. Uh, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, yeah. There's comedic moments. Like Roger Moore's Bond films, it's tongue-in-cheek. Um, it, tongue Ian McShane... If it's Roger Moore. Huh? If it's Roger Moore, tongue in whose cheek? Well, that's true. I've been well, going through them enough. now, and he spends more time in a dressing gown in those movies than he does anything else. <laughs> yeah, it's Every, tuxedo's yeah. iconic, but... The opening shot of Roger Moore as Bond is in Live and Let Die, and it's a close-up of his nipple. It kind of sets the tone for the rest of... Is it of, really? Yeah. I don't even remember And then it pulls out, and he's necking some girl, who, and Neck the M turns up, and he has to hide the girl in a cupboard for some reason. <laughs> yeah, he's not allowed he's to be on the job he's on the job. He's in his own house. He's on the job. Time. No, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's not even on the job. Yeah. He's on... A just makes yeah. her just hide in a cupboard for no reason. He oh, doesn't wow. He doesn't find the brightest ones, Roger Moore. <laughs> um, anyway... Well, isn't that for a reason then? Isn't he, like, embarrassed? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, Lovejoy, Ian McShane, <laughs> in this movie is basically M. And he's introduced 
dealing on he is. You, yeah, yeah. You can take Ian McShane out of Lovejoy, but you can never take the Lovejoy out of Ian McShane. Um, uh. I was waiting for him to take his coat off and to have a leather coat underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in many ways, you could see this as being a progression of where Lovejoy would be right now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now yeah. the top of a crime syndicate that deals exclusively in rare gold coins. Uh, so he's M. <laughs> That he gives Keanu Reeves all the missions, yeah. basically. Tells mm-hmm. him what to do and whatnot. Uh, there's obviously the cue sequence when Keanu Reeves is getting tooled up with like bulletproof tuxedos and things like that. Peter Serafino, it pops up. Yes. Did you like that? Yes, I did. Is uh, that a spoiler? Uh, no, it's in the trailer. It's in the uh, trailer. What's his face? Uh, Lance Reddick, the guy that looks after the dog. You know, on the, mm-hmm. He's basically Money Penny because... He's at the start. He's he's who you have to get through to get to M. He's the gatekeeper. Yeah, and there's always yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. bants, as they say. Yeah, mad bants. Yeah. Um, it, it is... Oh, at the end of the movie is like a giant mirror room, which mm. is like Man with the Golden Gun and Enter the Dragon. And it even goes a bit globe globetrotting this time. Well, Enter the Dragon isn't a Bond film. Why did you mention that? Well, because it's just worth mentioning. But also Enter the Dragon is basically a Bond film. And the Dragon is is Bruce Lee with a Bond movie, All right. uh, which is ironic because Man of the Golden Gun then ripped it off. So Enter <laughs> right. the Dragon ripped off Bond movies, and then Man of the Golden Gun ripped off Enter the Dragon. Specifically that one. And though. now John Wick Two is referenced. <laughs> right. um, homage, homage. What? It, well, reference isn't in, in a derogatory way of saying that. No, you're right. I could have said ripped off. You could have, but I wouldn't. Done no, because you this film is didn't. perfect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Did no wrong. If I suppose I have one criticism, is it going to be Ruby Rose? What's Ruby Rose? The, the girl that's in it. She's kind of popping up in all sorts these days. She's the one that was in Triple X. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, know. She was silent. I wish she'd have been silent in Triple X as well. Oh. Uh, and it was kind of cool to have her like mute like that. It kind of gave her a thing. Yeah, it was a bit different. It was a bit like um, The Raid 2 in that aspect, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, which is another film this reminded me of. Mm. Or Berendel, as it's called. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, no. It's that. What didn't. What? Oh, yeah. Something about Bond. No, it's what I was going to give it a very slight criticism. Oh, okay, give us the crit- critical one. It'd have been nice to see a bit more of John Leguizmo. He didn't really do much. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah. kind of popped up, said about, you know, Christmas 2030 and oh, walked off. Yeah, the very, very end as well, I won't spoil it. But the very end reminded me of uh, a particular a Bond film. I won't say which one because then that will give the end away. Okay. And it also reminded me of a Batman movie by Nolan and the end of that movie. Mm. And the Batman movies by Nolan are also hugely influenced by the Bonds. There's a whole big Bond thing. I've been watching a lot of Bond <laughs> movies recently. Yeah. I see yeah. a lot of Bond everywhere now. You do. Uh, do you think this was better or worse? He's than right there on the wall as well. The first one. There. Yes, he is. Uh, better or first? Uh, I love the first one a lot. I think it's better. Yeah. You think the second one I is better? I think the first one's better. Yeah, obviously. I, think, I do too, but I still think the second one is pretty perfect. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Isn't Keanu Reeves probably the greatest human ever? He's really very good, yeah. That's yeah. not what I asked you. Yeah. Uh, greatest human's probably strong. He's certainly in the top ten. Because I know you like De Niro, but he's gone down your estimations lately as well, hasn't well, he? Well, for lots of reasons. For Firstly, 20 years of shit. Oh, no, his political stances shit. are fine. That implies I'm a Trump supporter. <laughs> uh, his thing about autism and stuff is a bit uh, silly. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. But that's fine. You know, he's allowed to be silly. <clears throat> yeah. it's his, he, he can spout whatever science crap he wants because mm. he's not a scientist. I'd like him to make some good movies. Yeah. Uh, but Keanu Reeves just seems really cool. If you listen to him in interviews as well now, they're all hilarious because it's like he's on crack. Like he's the most excited person ever. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was listening to one the other day in which he didn't make a single joke and I laughed about nine times just because of how enthusiastic. And like, and he like repeats the questions in a Keanu Reeves way. So like, what makes John Wick 2 different? He's like, John Wick 2 different. What makes it different? <laughs> well, it's just so good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So listen to John Wick 2 interviews with him. As a come down after having seen the film. As a come down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like the methadone jelly to the heroin that is this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Really, it was just no. it was perfect. Did you like um, Morpheus? Yes, I did like Morpheus, and I would like Carrie Moss in the third one now, please. Well, I don't know why, because I saw that picture a little while ago of them all together. Obviously, for oh, like, yeah. yeah, I thought I assumed like the Holy Trinity thing. Mm. I assumed she would be in it somewhere, but she didn't even pop up. Didn't even no, show her face. but we still don't really know who's on the council in this Hitman world. That's true. And the film obviously has a cameo from Lawrence Fishburne, who is Morpheus in the Matrix, and it starts with a cameo a bit more from... more than a cameo, do you reckon? In this movie. Yeah. No, that's kind of a cameo. Very small supporting part, then. Small supporting, yeah. And it opens with a cameo from Peter Starmer, who obviously plays the devil in Constantine, which mm-hmm. is also kind of an underrated movie. I so for Constantine. going through the back catalogue of, you know, people that should cameo in... In the next few movies, I want Jaimon Hussan, who was in obviously Constantine. <clears throat> I want 
Carrie Ann Moss. Shia LaBeouf. Constantine. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, uh, and I want Sandra Bullock from Speed. I want those three people. Oh, yeah, Sandra Bullock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She'd, have, yeah. Yeah. She, she'd suit that world as well. She w- And so would Carrie Ann Moss. And, oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, yeah, and, yeah. and Hassan. I mean, because Carrie Ann Moss has obviously been in, like, dead. Well, that whole, like, Marvel kind of Hell's Kitchen world, yeah, isn't she? in the she? Matrix as well. She is in the Matrix too, yes. Yes, well spotted. Um, but I'm just saying, like, she fits that kind of... You know, Sandra Bullock. No, no, no. Carrie Moss. Uh, no, yeah, never mind. It's fine. Yeah, they, well, they would all. I fit. agree. It'd be great to have the whole Keanu and back catalogue. If you remember rightly, Robert Downey Jr. Let's get him in. No. Um, if you Harrison, remember right, no. Let's get him in. If you remember rightly, when we did our last video for John Wick, I said I wanted Lawrence Fishburne to be in the next movie, and you're like, oh yeah, obviously you do. Blah 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 blah. Obviously you do. And he was. And now I want Carrie <laughs> Moss, Sandra Bullock, <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm saying his name wrong, but Jaimon Honsu or whatever it is. Wait, are you saying this because you're kind of proving that you've that you've known about it in the future, or do you think people important are listening and looking for hints <laughs> about who to cast in their next films? Look, I don't know who listens to these things. I mean, I have my suspicions, and I think it's probably all the people I've just named. <laughs> uh, so, so get on it. Get on it, yeah. <laughs> bye, everyone. Uh, five stars, bye, bye, bye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking it's five stars. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Someone get this man a review. <laughs>